Teresa is a fabulous dancer, if you've ever seen her at any of the 40 plus dances. Um, one of her, her first girlfriends was a native woman. And you guys ran away to do migrant farm working, correct? And your husband came and found you and busted down the door. We went to Beaumont to pick cherries. <laughs> and we made like 50 cents an hour. And yes, my ex-husband tracked me down, had a gun. She ran out of the trailer. I hit him, he hit me in the face with a gun. And I still have a scar. <laughs> but that didn't stop me. So she is one of the women who actually made the, the divide from 1960s bar culture to a 1970s lesbian feminism. In Los Angeles, was also a bartender at the Star Room. <laughs> and I believe you were the first woman to legally pour, right? Other than the owner of the bar? Other than the owner. Other than the owner. Because women could not legally pour alcohol. So Barbara is the first woman to actually legally be able to pour your drinks in service to the community in uh, the Star Room. So that's a distinction, um, which I think is fabulous, because before that, you couldn't do it the only one, because she was uh, married to the owner, right? That's why... Her husband, Mort, yeah. He was the owner of the Star Room. So that's why she could pour. How many of you have ever been in the Star Room? Right on. Where was it located? Santa Monica Boulevard, correct? No. Uh, it was the... Um, it wasn't really part of the county of Los Angeles. Uh, what do they call it when it's, when it's not? Yeah, and it was sort of in a funny place, and it was sort of, it was a nice bar. It was a nice, good-looking bar. Uh, we had a lot of people, a lot of teachers, a lot of uh, airline hostesses. Yes, yeah, most of it, yes. Barbara had a really good time in the bar. Very religious. <laughs> Marie's book reminds me of, I sort of walked out of the convent door in 1967 and more or less walked into the door of a lesbian bar in 1968. And so um, they weren't that different except, <laughs> except for the lighting. <laughs> One was stained glass and one was a little grittier. <laughs> and the first time I ever went to bed with a woman was in the convent. The morning after, we, we woke up and uh, she said to me something like, I don't remember the exact words because it was 68, she said, the morning after we'd done it, um, she said, wasn't that a remarkable Religious experience we had. Okay, you didn't tell. That would have been great. That would have, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> and she said it. Yeah, she said it. She said it. And I, of course, I, Thank you. I I'm sorry. You. I, uh, <laughs> I was so stunned. I, have I, I didn't know what pages to say. That says I would have believed you. <laughs> And, and I was so stunned. Right there, I knew the difference between being a lesbian and being uh, a nun, and that I couldn't stay. Gay bars actually meant for her still a way to come into her identity as a butch woman. And I remember you telling me, I finally wore a tie. <laughs> And uh, the other thing, Lisa met me for years and years and years to help me get my project on track. And as an MBA, she helped me to organize my interviews into very doable sections. <laughs> yeah. Did you say anything? Um, it took a while. <laughs> for the book was, and for... <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for the book and uh, all of our meetings and to get your book finished. Yeah. But I do remember a bar story um, for us. We were at the Palms one night. And um, what was the name of that comedian? The, uh, Leah, Delaria. Leah Delaria came in, 
and um, she was hitting on Marie, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, she said something like, "Do you know who I am?" And uh, you know, I was of course really good friends with Marie, and I said, "Well, do you know who she is?" <laughs> so uh, that was a fun night, <laughs> one of many, many fun nights. Hi, um, howdy. <laughs> this picture of, on the cover here, the one in the pink shirt, that's me. I was 21 then, I'm 73 now. And um, the red convertible belonged to the bartender at the Acme Bar. And she thought that red convertible made her even more wonderful than she thought she had been before. <laughs> The Acme Bar was a dingy rat hole. It was like a shoebox painted black with sagging wood floors and a forest of signs like credit, forget it. And I loved it. It was in this desolate part of town in San Antonio. Though that's when I came out in San Antonio. When I talk in public, my accent starts to, it's, something happens to my mouth. Um, the Acme Bar was, um, it, it was just a junk hole, but I loved it. We all loved it. There was another place. The pictures of it aren't up here. In fact, I don't think I have them. It was by Maybell and B. Were two crusty old buckets who had been together, I think, since the 1940s. And they ran this uh, bar for gay men and gay women out in the country. That's what we called it because... Um, it was outside the city limits because we, we could dance there because it took the vice and the police and the military police and the sheriff longer to get there. <laughs> and, and Maybell had this warning sign for when the police were there. Usually she had this red bandana around her neck and she'd walk in from the, there was a little bar in the front room and a little, um, dance floor, large dance floor in the back. And we would be all dancing, men with men and women with women. And then Maybelle would come and she'd stand in that doorway and her little bandana would be in her front pocket, not around her neck. And that was the sign. The police were there. So immediately, about the time it took to say bossa nova cha-cha twist, <laughs> we had switched into heterosexual, happy heterosexual couples. <laughs> and so when the police came in, we're just male and female couples. And um, it pissed them off. <laughs> they knew we were gay. We knew they knew it. They knew we knew they knew it. <laughs> and they would look scouring through trying to find a woman accidentally, you know, kind of touching a woman's hand under the table or a, a man pressing another man's shoulder too close. But, and if they found it, that person was arrested. And if they ever caught us dancing gaily, they could have a whole paddy wagon full of us. But when they didn't catch us, again, they got really pissed off. And they'd leave, like, well, we'll be back. And when they left, we would, we would raise our glasses to one another and then we'd start dancing gaily again. And what was your toast? My toast, and it's the name of a story of mine that you can read on the Mazer, was cheers, cheers everybody. everybody. <laughs>